Imagine a wandering black hole entering the solar system and devouring our only source of energy in a short period of time. Humanity watches as the sun disappears from the sky, preparing for a terrifying end. Hello everyone! Do you find it terrifying? What if there were a greedy little black hole inside the sun, devouring matter from within? How long can the sun sustain this parasite? Here is our channel. This time, let's explore what would happen if there were a black hole inside a star and whether this seemingly absurd theory is actually true. Relax and get comfortable? Let's get started. What are primordial black holes? People love to fantasize about black holes. They're depicted in all sorts of monstrous forms, with filmmakers often cramming spaceships and entire star systems into their dark embrace. But what if black holes behaved entirely differently from what we typically imagine? As you know, the cosmos is filled with cleverly concealed black holes. But what if these celestial bodies possessed even greater capabilities, lurking within the interior of stars and leading comfortable lives there? Those of you familiar with our channel likely know that black holes can be billions of times more massive than the Sun. How could such massive entities possibly fit within relatively small stars? It's a valid question. Monsters like Sagittarius A star and Ton 618 would find it utterly impossible. But for tiny black holes, it wouldn't be so strange to exist within other celestial bodies. Ordinary black holes form after the collapse of supermassive stars. These black holes, once they've acquired enough nourishment in the form of dust, gas, and other stars or planets, can grow and spin around their galaxy. However, the cosmos is thought to be teeming with relatively light, minuscule black holes. This theory was proposed back in the 1970s by British theoretical physicist Dr. Stephen Hawking. According to him, even if there were a black hole with the mass of Mercury inside the Sun, we wouldn't notice. Dr. Hawking suggested that tiny black holes formed in the first few seconds after the Big Bang might be darting around space. These are now known as primordial black holes. In the first few nanoseconds after the birth of the universe, space was under immense pressure and extremely high temperatures. It's believed that tiny black holes formed due to fluctuations in matter density. These celestial bodies are highly stable, so there's a good chance some are still around today. If Dr. Stephen Hawking's theory is correct, it could also help explain the phenomenon of dark matter. Cosmologists believe that celestial bodies ranging from 10 to the 14 kilograms to 10 to the 23 kilograms make up dark matter. We can't see dark matter, but it exerts gravitational effects on observable celestial bodies. Much is known about supermassive black holes, but very little is known about primordial black holes. That's because advanced techniques for searching for such small celestial bodies haven't existed for long. Recently, there's been a breakthrough in this field. In 2016, astronomers began operating the gravitational wave detection device LIGO. This device can capture the vibrations of the cosmos that occur when two black holes collide. Out of 47 recorded collisions, approximately one-fourth of cases suggest the involvement of primordial black holes. Researchers like Gabrielle Franciolini and colleagues at the University of Geneva who analyzed the data were shocked by these findings. While this is only indirect evidence of primordial black holes in space, it represents a significant step forward for future research. How do black holes enter the interiors of stars? The birth of a star requires vast amounts of interstellar gas. This gas, influenced by gravity, rotates into a disk shape, forming a high-density, super-hot sphere. Inside the core, the high pressure initiates nuclear fusion reactions. And if we fast-forward the process of stellar evolution from millions of years to mere seconds, we witness the birth of a star. This is a story of the countless ordinary stars that exist throughout the universe. 
However, there may also be stars in the cosmos known as Hawking stars, harboring primordial black holes within their interiors. Some scientists have coined a more clever name for them, Swiss cheese stars. The black holes inside Hawking stars are likened to parasites, devouring delicious meat from within. But is it really appropriate to label Hawking stars as parasites? Are truly small black holes just troublesome entities? If dark matter consists of primordial black holes, then there should be a vast number of black holes in space. In such a scenario, it wouldn't be surprising if one of them got caught up in the gas flow during star formation. Even if a black hole with the mass of an atom were drawn into the accretion disk, it would not affect the formation of a star. Black holes cannot dictate the rules of their own game based on gravity alone. Eventually, the black hole falls toward the center of the core. And there, something truly fascinating begins. For billions of years, or perhaps even longer, it can feast for free. Why don't black holes destroy stars? Black holes are known for their voracious consumption of matter in the cosmos. But why don't small primordial black holes instantly destroy stars? Despite an abundance of matter, why is this the case? Well, the mechanism is slightly different. Black holes push aside star material by emitting energy. This is akin to a showdown between two rivals of equal strength. Thus, the growth of black holes is exceedingly slow and has its limits. There are other reasons why primordial black holes can't swallow stars. One reason is their relatively small mass. They simply can't absorb matter as much as they'd like. Scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics, MPA Stellar Department, have calculated that a primordial black hole the size of an atom can absorb 100 tons of matter per second. This may seem like a substantial figure. However, the Sun emits millions of tons of matter into space in the same second. Therefore, primordial black holes might not be as voracious as one might think. The Activities of Hawking Stars As black holes grow, their gravitational pull intensifies. Consequently, it becomes easier for stellar material to enter the black hole. Moreover, the energy of the black hole also increases. It's important not to forget that nuclear reactions continue in the core of stars during this time. Stars generate their own energy while also receiving additional energy from the black hole. According to calculations by Associate Professor Earl Bellinger of Yale University, a primordial black hole the size of an atom would take billions of years to grow to a diameter of 10 centimeters. By that time, it is estimated to have a mass close to that of Uranus. When the black hole reaches this figure, gravitational disturbances inside the star cause the outer layers of the star to expand. This state is similar to the process by which a normal star like the Sun dies. But Hawking stars have secrets. During this process, nuclear reactions in the core cease, and the star operates solely on the energy of the black hole. This is indeed a perpetual motion machine. But that's not all. Stars with black holes at their centers live remarkably long lives. Therefore, this parasite becomes an elixir of youth for the star. The mass of a Hawking star can be up to five times that of the Sun, and its brightness can be ten times that of the Sun. Hence, they are called subgiant stars. So, how do we determine if there is a black hole inside a star? We can't cut stars open with surgical scalpels to search for different types of celestial bodies or dig through their layers. Whether a black hole is hidden inside a star can be confirmed by the star's vibrations. This could be detected using a relatively new field called astroseismology, which investigates the interior of stars using acoustic vibrations. Scientists suggest that Hawking stars might be a typical phenomenon observed in globular clusters and ultra-low luminosity dwarf galaxies. This concludes today's video. Thank you all for watching. Did you enjoy it? What about the Sun? Some of you might be wondering. There may be concerns that black holes exist even within the Sun. Rest assured, fortunately or unfortunately, the likelihood of this is almost zero. 
Current astro-seismic studies do not show vibrations within the Sun's interior to support this theory. Additionally, scientists monitor neutrino levels. The quantities observed do not indicate any anomalies within the Sun. There is a possibility of billions of Hawking stars existing in the vast expanse of space. We just need to find them, and we believe that day will come soon. So, it's time to bid farewell for now. Until we meet again soon, goodbye.